Welcome back. You're still with this special telecast on Artwise where we're discussing issues that face the buyer from liquidity to other aspects uh, that will perhaps be entry barriers uh, in the world of art. Ambish, uh, this issue of um, research that right. uh, we were talking about just a while back in the break as well, how important is that from an investor's perspective? Because one of the things that uh, a lot of people are scared about when they enter the art market is duplication of fakes as well. So right. how authentic is the research out there and how deep does it have to be before you take your first step into it? See, research is important, whether it's art or equity, it is important. And um, I mean, what I've seen from Copal, uh, the amount of research which they do, the amount of information which they actually provide uh, to an investor or an art collector is tremendous. And uh, I mean, I see a lot of uh, similarity between the way we do research for equity and the way, I mean, they do research, uh, I'm not an artist. End of the day, when you're doing a equity research, you look at the sector, you look at the management. Okay. Here, you track the artist, what sort of uh, work he has done in the past, what is the future for the, his sort of art, uh, I mean, how has the trend moved, and the pricing. And the way they have actually put that down and they keep informing the investors, I think that is very important. Right. Um, as you are talking about the research that Kopal does that Ambish was just mentioning, you have a research team in place which takes out reports of an average of one in a week or something? No, it's just on a quite, uh, you know, regular basis. Uh, one is that we have set up, uh, you know, 18 months back a full-fledged research wing. You know, I was always very, very passionate as to, you know, the things, you know, we have to structure the whole this thing. So, the question as Ambish had put in is that if you have a proper research in place, the chances of copal or an investor going wrong is this very rare. Now, like in equity, you know, they, they monitor a couple of issues, you know, the price earning issues, the future calls and all. So that's why we have set up our, our norms, which we share with the collectors. And I'm happy to inform you that none of our recommendations have ever gone wrong. Mm -hmm. When the markets were haywire, right. like Amrish knows, all artists which Copal recommended, because we had discounted everything, you know, that if things go bad, mm -hmm. what would be there? I always do advise that a good artist and good work. And for a beginner, the the research is available from Copal, but the outside diligence will also be done, which Copal provides. And this research info is shared on a very, very regular basis okay. with all the clients. It is sent to them on mail. It is sent as a research report. We have done three major reports on National Heritage, Yogen Chaudhary, S.H. Raza, now we're doing it on Bharti K. These are worth reading reports. Right, and it's also very important for a buyer, apart from having their homework in place, apart from reading up this research, it's also important for a buyer to know how to maintain their artwork and also the possible requirements of restoration. One of India's topmost restorers, Priya Khanna, speaks to that on that subject. The value of art is not merely a measure of how much it was acquired for but also how well it has been maintained and preserved. Right from the time it was bought to the time it adorns the walls of your home. It's as much a service to art as your investment to ensure that the artwork is properly looked after. Now suddenly with the Indian art uh, making such a wave in the uh, international art circles and the auctions, uh, a lot more people have got aware of the value of what they possess monetarily. So once they are aware that they could have something of value, then they uh, don't mind looking after it, maintaining it, restoring it, because it is preserving the value or in some cases, I would say in most of the cases, even enhancing the value and giving it a life, a healthy life for the next so many years. <laughs> Art restoration is an integral part of the art ecosystem. Paintings can get damaged due to several factors such as age, environmental conditions, human negligence, accidents, fires and fungal attacks. Restoring art is a very elaborate, lengthy and an extremely meticulous process. We are actually trying to make a lot of collectors uh, who come to us with work for restoration, we do try and advise them on how to look after their paintings once we have completed the restoration process. We do advise them of the do's and the don'ts. And uh, we, I, I do go for, uh, you know, talks in uh, various galleries where they do have, uh, you know, collectors coming in to hear at least the basic requirements uh, that uh, they need to look into for the maintenance of artwork. 
So, if you are a collector, here are some basic tips on maintaining your artwork. It is advisable never to light the painting directly. Indirect lighting is recommended. Avoid exposing artworks to direct sunlight. Dust the painting regularly, but at the same time ensure that the paint doesn't flake off. During the monsoon, use a dehumidifier to prevent the growth of fungus. Occasionally, remove the painting to check the reverse for dampness. Karna, what's your own take on uh, restoration, uh, especially in the light of what happened uh, a couple of years back uh, in Mumbai at certain heritage places? Does this increase the significance and importance of restoration? What's your own take on it? Oh, of course, it's uh, the most important thing. Now people have started valuing it. Otherwise, uh, people never knew the what kind of art they were possessing or what they are supposed to do after buying an expensive piece of art. But now, because of all the awareness, people are very conscious about it and they do take advice from galleries before buying. They do ask many questions before buying about the paperwork, about the canvas. And I think now everyone should make it a yearly vision to look at your art, own art, look behind take out the painting from your wall, clean the wall, clean everything, be very sure of maintaining your art and if it's the required restoration, immediately one should look at it and not neglect it. True, maintenance is a significant part of owning an artwork that comes out in this discussion but stay with us, there's yet another segment on this episode. Now the documents which a buyer should look at is the, the whole chain from where the painting has been moving. You know, who was the last? The yes, entire chain. Provenance. It's called provenance. Yeah. Number yes. two, ask for the documentation of payments and invoices of the previous transactions also. That is what you know we do advise. Third is ask for wherever the artists are living. This is for the artist authentication also. I mean the idea is to get as many documents you could. I mean one could fudge one, two, three. And always insist for payment receipts. Mm -hmm. Do not do any cash transactions, which you know people do. When you buy, ask for an invoice. Now you know if he, sometimes you know people feel I have got an authenticity certificate and I have got the painting, so I am secured. No, the title is not clear. So you have to have a purchase invoice, the payment receipt, authentication from that uh, you know seller, all previous authentications, and provenance and payment receipt. I mean then you are you know, fully protected. And I think uh, we have to be very careful that if we have even 1% of a doubt, we should not, you know, try to sell that painting. It has happened with Copal once. We got a one fake painting by mistake. The moment we came to know about it, we destroyed mm -hmm. the painting immediately and we never sold that. Right. Uh, Amrish, when you got into uh, buying art a few yes. years ago, how has your experience been in paperwork? Uh, see, basically, uh, the way you should look at it is just the way you used to look at possibly stock markets 20 years back. Yeah, I mean, you have to choose your stockbroker with a lot of care just to ensure that he is uh, advising the right and whatever you're buying from, at that point of time, you have physical paper mm -hmm. just to ensure that what you get is not fake. Mm -hmm. So, similarly, as far as Copal is concerned, I mean, I have been tracking them for about two to three years before I actually bought my first piece of art. Okay. So, I did my homework well just to ensure that everything is in place. Uh, and then uh, when I bought, I think I bought around 9-10 months back and all the paperwork was done by Kupal and I was quite satisfied with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Rakhna, what's your own sense? Uh, in galleries these days, uh, do you find more curious uh, yet skeptical investors or is the repeat crowd just the suave collectors who've just been adding to their uh, portfolio and collections over the years? Uh, what's the kind of divide that you see right now? Is there apprehension or skepticism in the fraternity out there? In fact, uh, I see many more uh, young collectors coming in, be becoming collector, buying first work of art and then becoming a collector. I see many more new people coming in, in the gallery. And uh, I mean, I really appreciate such TV shows which brings serious awareness where so many issues are handled. And uh, gallery should also have the responsibility of uh, facing all the issues Luckily in Tao, in 11 years, we have never made a mistake, but I was very conscious about it. I was, I mean, before touching any work of master's art where I didn't have the proper paper, I didn't let go of their work. I mean, one has to be very careful 
uh, and responsible in this art world because money is important for uh, and we have to put ourselves in other people's shoes that how a person would feel once he comes to know that uh, this is a fake painting so it's a serious issue and uh, i think we all are handling it uh, more carefully now on that note uh, we have to wrap the show and be it has been interesting discussion it has i think there are challenges but there are ways out of it i guess uh, so uh, many thanks to all our guests uh, for taking time out and joining in on this episode and as always on behalf of my entire team Sahar and myself thanks so much for watching thanks Brought to you by Copel, the world's biggest delivery-linked art fund, a Bloomberg UTV Pulse initiative. <laughs>